Thank you for inviting me. It's great to be back here. Uh, this time I'm a little bit more prepared than I was first time. I didn't know too much about Estonia. I've seen a little bit on, on uh, the internet. And yesterday I was uh, visiting the demo center and I was really impressed. I think it's great what you have. I think it's like we heard, it's open, it's focused, it's global. And, and we should learn a lot from that and I hope really we can have some cooperation together. So, um, and, and, and also technically, I used to do software development, so I, I'm intrigued by that part as well. I think it's really the right choice you have made and I hope we can find some cooperation opportunities together. So I will uh, f uh, select three areas that I'm going to talk about. Uh, smart grid, uh, green data centers, and e-health slash assisted living. All these three areas are quite in, in a kind of starting phase in, in Norway. So there are opportunities. And they are all very important nationally in Norway. They are important globally. So hopefully we could have some good uh, cooperation projects together. But before I go into details on this, I'll say a few words about uh, Norwegian ICT as such. Uh, the ICT sector in Norway is important for the other sectors. So uh, the ICT sector is big in itself, but the impact it has on other sectors is tremendous. And it's driving innovation, it's driving development in all the other sectors. And I could say that we are stronger and stronger in Norway within software development for the moment. And that part is as big as agriculture alone in Norway. Uh, and the se ICT sector as such is number three among the sectors, industry sectors in Norway. And we have a very international focus, as you have. Uh, sales like 20 plus billion euros, uh, around 52,000 employees and 6,000 companies. That says, tells us that these companies are small companies. Then I would just say that uh, many of the companies in Norway uh, who are in ICT have learned a lot from the one big market we have in Norway, and that's oil and gas. Because we have to have really uh, reliable systems uh, related to oil and gas, and it's a very global competition within that sector. So we are learning, and we are having technology development from that, that sector. And if you look at the sector today, when we started, we had no, no Norwegian technology, no markets from Norway. Today, uh, Norwegian technology uh, within subsea uh, installations is marketed all over the world. And a very important part of that is ICT. So the Kongsberg Group, I, I used to work there, they are into uh, uh, subsea development. And they are starting out, started out as mechanical engineering. But today, I, I would assume that around 80% of their work is software. So it's, it's changing every sector. Then uh, the three selected areas, as I said, areas in, in a quite early phase. Smart grid, I uh, want to present because I know that there is quite some interest in Estonia within Smart Grid. And I know that there is a group coming to Norway very soon to, to learn more about what we do within Smart Grid. Enormous investments, uh, and I would say a lot of old players, now I'm talking about Norway. The power companies have not been that much linked to ICT earlier, but with Smart Grid they will be. So we have more and more ICT companies working within this field. We want to have more innovation and more new business development within this area. And we need then a new platform for services. And I wish we had uh, your eEstonia platform, like Xroad and EID and all these, uh, how can I say, components uh, going into this. And maybe we can do, some, we can do something to, together on that part. 
because I see that uh, smart grid uh, employed the, the right way will be a basis for a lot of new services that could be, could be developed for a global market. Maybe you see the windmill. So it's new forms of energy. And in Norway, we have a lot of energy, and we will have a lot more energy because of uh, regulations. And we need to find out how to use, utilize that energy in the right way. I'll come back to that. I said that we need to have more innovation, more cooperation. And um, we started up the Norwegian Smart Grid Center uh, a couple of years ago. And they are involving the power companies, ICT companies, and a lot of smaller companies within this area. So uh, with the Smart Grid Center, we are uh, able to have a national focus on Smart Grid. So that means that we have national demo projects. I know that uh, the group that's coming to Norway will see one of these demo projects. I'll talk about another one. And as I said, new platforms and then market opportunities. So the, the demo project that is in the southeastern part of Norway <coughs> is called Smart Energy Valley. Valley is the name of the area. And within this um, project, we have planning and decision support systems, infrastructure simulation, and I think that's quite important because if you can, if you can economize from, from <coughs> simulations and then decide where should you spend your money when you grow the network, then you can, you can really reduce investments quite a bit. And then it's local production of wind and solar, and this is new to Norway to, to allow, how can I say, new forms of energy coming into the system. We have so much hydropower in Norway, so we have had it kind of too easy. And then it's storage. Storage for us, for the moment, is more to have uh, dams with a lot of water, and we, we can produce them when we, when we need. And we sometimes pump the water back to, to the reservoirs. And, and in that sense, we can have a kind of a battery with water. And in, in this project, we have had a lot of active users. And that's quite important. This is a map of the area, uh, the walled <coughs> area. It's a summer residential area. And so uh, a lot of dynamics in, in the use of energy. We, so a lot of people have their cottages. Uh, and uh, in this area, so they stay here uh, in the summertime, in weekends, and so on. So the use of energy is varying quite a bit. This is demanding, but it's a perfect match for, for uh, how can I say, a demo center, because you get really interesting uh, simulations and data from, from the projects. And uh, eight, uh, a little bit more than 8,000 smart meters are involved in the project. It started uh, a little bit more than a year ago, and it's a radio-based network. And the good thing about this project it, is that we have the production system, and we have a demo system where we copy all the real data. So this is not just a, a small test. We can really uh, simulate and test on the bigger data from the production system. And we have some companies uh, going abroad with this technology. Uh, we saw this uh, electric bike that was sold to China. Uh, we sell smart meters technology to India. And we have two small companies, uh, one called Radiocrafts, and dealing with hardware, and a company called Tiny Mesh dealing with the software part. And they already sold 200,000 units, communication modules, for smart meters to India, and they expect to sell 800,000. So it's a, it's a, it's a really big, uh, um, big opportunity for these two companies, and they become kind of a de facto standard in India on this. Then the next uh, 
area I would like to present, uh, green data centers. We heard about greening with ICT and in ICT, and this is, uh, I mean, really in ICT. There is so much waste uh, in a standard uh, data center today. A, a standard data center today runs at, how can I say, performance 15%. A good data center, green data center, should run at 85, at least. And um, we s utilize more and more data today. In fact, uh, the amount of data doubles every 18 months in the world, and that's, that's enormous. And it means you need to have a lot of equipment to process and store data. And uh, in 2015, just the European market for processing and storing uh, will require uh, 100 terawatt hours per year. And just to tell you what that is, that is the same as uh, the energy needed for 8 million homes. This is just to process what we do within ICT in Europe. So it's enormous. And uh, we would like to attract some of these data centers to Norway or to attract the business to Norway. We see with more and more sensor networks, with more and more uh, smart grid uh, systems, with more and more applications within e-health and so on, uh, this, this is going to be a steady market. And um, so we have uh, some sites uh, already in Norway and, and some under construction. This is uh, from an article in the Times, and this is a, a green uh, data center in the western part of Norway. In fact, this is from the outside, how it looks from the outside. So it's a nice area. Uh, and from the inside, you can see that it's quite big. Uh, it uh, <laughs> has the opportunity to be the biggest data center in the world. And if you see the Statue of Liberty and you see a, a big jumbo plane, you see that uh, the, the, the amount of tunnels, the network of tunnels within this mountain is quite, quite big. It's an old mine, and uh, the name of it is, uh, for the data center, is Leftal Mine, so they keep the mine name in it. And of course, if you want to run a data center uh, with uh, this size, you need some partners as well. And they have big partners within ICT, within uh, fiber, within power, and so on. And that's, that's necessary. And this is from another example of a data center. This is uh, a center close to Stavanger. And they are um, having a, also a mountain hall um, uh, to close to a fjord and a very sophisticated uh, cooling system. So they say that they aspire to be the greenest data center. And they open up their data center now in May, and they have uh, quite some Norwegian clients, and they are starting to acquire international clients to their data center. And again, I, I said we want to talk about cooperation. Within Norway, we have had uh, quite some cooperation within green, green data centers. We thought it should go faster than it has done, but now we see that <coughs> the investors are coming. We even had uh, discussions with Estonia uh, on this, and, and uh, we see it's not just plans or PowerPoints, it's actual buildings. So the previous I showed you, they have invested uh, like uh, more than uh, 30 million euros in their center so far, and they can, they can uh, spend more on it. So hopefully we could work together on this one as well. And then why Norway? Uh, a green data center is kind of a new kind of power intensive industry. It's, it's first of all power needed. And we hope that uh, the companies would like to have green power. And that's what we have in Norway. We have hydropower. 95% of all the power we have in Norway is, comes from hydro. So it's, it's, it's 
totally clean. And we have a leading price level on the power. We have free cooling. Sometimes it's okay to have a cold climate. <laughs> we have large space, as you saw. And we have an excellent infrastructure. And that's, that's important, because you need, you need uh, a lot of, uh, how can I say, power lines, and, and also fiber. And the traffic related to big data centers is enormous. So when Facebook uh, started their uh, data center in Sweden, they doubled the internet traffic in and out of Sweden. Just one data center. So a lot of new opportunities for, uh, <coughs> for um, the fiber companies, but they need to readjust their business models a little bit. For the moment, uh, it's, there is a need for looking at, at some of these business models. And in Norway, we have stability. Not too many earthquakes, not too many tsunamis, and, and political and economical also quite stable. And we say it's easy to do business, and we have reports showing that also. And then we have the ICT expertise, maybe together with you, uh, on, on this area. Then the last uh, area I would like to present, um, e-health, assisted living. Just give you some glimpses and, and, and show you some companies, because I hope that you, you can come back to me and say, I want to co uh, cooperate with this company. I want to, to meet this, uh, uh, this sector and, and, and see what we can do together. Uh, this is uh, um, Oslo, Oslo, central part of Oslo. And here we see we have located a lot of ICT companies. So Oslo is kind of the center of ICT in Norway. We have some other areas, which is quite good, but Oslo is really the center. And uh, Norwegian companies, international companies, and maybe some Estonian companies. Why not? And in Oslo, we also have uh, we work together uh, within uh, eHealth. Oslo MedTech is a cluster of uh, eHealth companies, and they have their expertise. They cooperate, and they think international in their plans. And you see the, the, the companies, um, the members of Oslo MedTech. In the beginning, it was just Oslo. Now it's uh, more and more companies uh, all around Norway. And there is a good cooperation with the University of Oslo and with the National Hospital. And they are located just outside of Oslo MedTech. You see the blue line, blue circle, that's Oslo MedTech. And then you have the campus of the university just to the right and the hospital to the left. And you see also a lot of companies and research institutions just nearby. And that's a good thing. It's, it's a really good thing. To show you some uh, companies, some examples, I don't know about you, I, I had my first video conference in 1986. It was a picture big like this, and uh, I saw nearly nothing, but, uh, and it was set up by experts and, and, and so on. And during the years I've had, I don't know how many problems setting up video conferencing uh, talks. And each time you spend the first 15 minutes by, to have the equipment to function this should be over. And there is one uh, Norwegian company uh, dealing with this. They, they are called Sivia. Uh, this is the CEO to the right here, Jörn Mikkelsen. He has a lot of experience from Tonberg, which was acquired by, by Cisco uh, some time ago for 2.5 billion euros. So that was a nice takeover if you, if you were among the shareholders. And, and this is the situation in Norway when we grow companies to a really big size, then sometimes they tend to be taken over by American companies. But the price is higher and higher, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, Civia has made it so much easier to, to start video conferencing. So it's, it's like calling. 
and I'll, I'll, I'll show you afterwards. Uh, so let's say that you are uh, in, a, in a hospital and you get uh, a patient from a country who can't speak, uh, and the pr uh, patient can't speak uh, Norwegian or uh, English or whatever, and then you need an interpreter. And then we have a service linked to video conferencing uh, um, concept uh, where you can just search for interpreter and the right language. And then you click call, and then the interpreter is there on the fly. And, and, and this is, so it's, it's video conferencing, uh, conferencing technology, but at the same time it's a new service where, where interpreters go together and they, they are available, uh, for a fee of course, uh, to be <coughs> there when you need them. And it's so easy to just start, start the, the, the video conference. There is all, uh, you can also utilize your mobile as a remote for starting up the video conferences. So you download uh, an app from App Store or from, uh, from um, also both iOS and Android, and then you can utilize your um, list of contacts, and you just say, I want to have conversation between these three sites, and you press call, and then you are, you are called by the system. So then you just answer and you're up and running in 10 seconds. Very easy. Then um, an application um, related to elderly. Um, we have had quite some uh, projects with municipalities testing out equipment. <laughs> But the challenge is to make new business models and to see where the money is, uh, like we heard about. And, and there is a power company called Lysa, which is now uh, also an ICT company. They have been dealing with ICT for quite some years, and the revenue within ICT is, is quite big now for, for Lysa. They have a system related to um, assisted living for elderly, services for uh, safety and security, communication services, and smart home services. So uh, that means that uh, they install uh, a sensor network in the apartments where um, the user is living, and they can track, uh, of course, temperature and activity and, uh, and uh, what you need uh, related to the applications you want to run. So uh, if a person is inactive for some time, it's detected by the system. If a person goes out, out in, in the night, uh, it's detected by the system. And of course, you can, you can uh, configure it as you, as you want to. And you can ut utilize it for, for checking uh, water and uh, for checking temperature and for checking uh, against the uh, fire uh, challenges and, and, and so on. And then there is a part related to communication, and they found out that the easiest way of uh, having communication for elderly is through TV. So they, they uh, use a standard TV and, and a camera, and then you have a remote, uh, either an iPad or a, a small standard uh, remote to, to utilize the, the functionality. And then they also have a service uh, to get with Red Cross, where you can have visitors, but virtual visitors. So they come and see you on, on your TV instead of knocking on your door. And this is how uh, the application looks like on your iPad. So you can, this is in Norwegian, sorry, put the means away, and then you can economize, and then you can have comfort. So you can set up uh, the system uh, to control your appliances in a very easy way. And you just push some buttons. And you can, of course, also have this downloaded to your iPhone or your Android phone and, and uh, do it from wherever. And you also have uh, uh, standard, standard switches 
So we can use either the physical switch or the, fi uh, the switch through your, your remote. Then, um, uh, safety alarms. We have had that in Norway for quite some time, but very old type technology. So they have been linked to the, 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 uh, the fixed network of t the telephones, and you, you could just use it if you were in your house, not when you were outside. Uh, so this is more kind of a safety alarm 2.0. Uh, it's uh, GSM based, and you have a small alarm, you have one button, and when you push the button, you, you can talk to the person you want to talk to, or the person uh, who, who is in your, in your system. If he's not there, the next person will be called, and so on. And, and it maybe ends in, in the hospital or whatever. It, it depends how you set it up. And uh, it has a GPS integrated, so the person who receives the call immediately knows where you are. And, and you have, so it's a small phone, you talk to the person, and, and maybe you just say that, I just wanted to say that I'm fine, and, and, and that's all. Or you say that you, you need help. And these uh, safety alarms can be used not just for elderly, could be used for small children, for work, for sports, whatever. And it seems that this is uh, taking off. So they have started to sell in, in international markets, and maybe they would be interested in talking to you about Estonia. So we'll find out. Then I'll present uh, a company. Maybe Christian Tesman should do that, but he can talk to you afterwards. <laughs> the CEO of the company is, is in the audience. Maybe you should stand up and wave so we can see you. <laughs> He's just the founder and the chairman. Yeah. Uh, he has a company called Trust Nordics, and, and his idea is to make a mobile wallet as an independent service. And uh, we all know the problem. In fact, I used to have uh, parts of that in, in a mobile phone I had in, in Japan, and I was, I was not happy when I had to give it back. <laughs> because it's, it's, it's a good thing. You can pay, you can do, you can have all your loyalty cards, you can have uh, keys, whatever that you have in your wallet, you can have in your phone instead. And that is so much easier. <coughs> and it should be a very good thing compared to what you are doing in E-Estonia, to talk more to, to Christian. So it uses NFC, uh, so near field communication, so you can have access control, you can have uh, tickets, loyalty cards, as I said, payment, and then it's a payment, a local payment from the phone, uh, where you have a prepaid uh, part, and then ID cards. And of, at the same time, you can utilize all e-commerce uh, solutions. And um, when you talk about security, uh, you need something that is really good. You need a PK, PKI infrastructure, uh, very much like what you have, or what you have <laughs> in Estonia. So I think you should talk to, to Christian about that. In fact, that's what I wanted to say. So I think we should start to cooperate, start to dance. And, uh, and I'm here to answer questions. And uh, we have our office in, in Tallinn. Urmas is uh, coming and presenting also. He can be contacted. And, and we saw Tina in, uh, in the video. So please talk to us, and thank you for your attention.